So good morning guys and welcome back to another video. So you join us at Wetlands Lakes and it's a Wetlands Animal Park uh, near Redford, Nottinghamshire. So we got here for just after seven o'clock this morning. You can't actually fish this lake overnight um, until you've proved yourself. So you've got to do a couple of day sessions first and then um, you can get a ticket to do night to do night sessions on here but we've managed to get around that we've uh, we phoned up and we spoke to the the bailiff and uh, because we come from newcastle well newcastle way durham um what they did for us was they did us a guest session so we're here for 60 hours is it darren <coughs> so we're here till friday evening anyways if we want to stay till seven o'clock that is um but yeah so we we've got six roughly 60 hours in front of us um, catch a few fish. So anyway, I'm getting the house set up. The rods are set up, so I'm just going to make some spod mix up and get that done. While I'm doing that, I'm going to watch the lake. I've already seen some fizzing when we got here, different different areas of the lake, but I'm going to watch the lake a bit more to decide where I'm going to put my rods. So right, guys, I'm going to get this done and I'll catch us a bit later. Nice fish that down. Look bro. So nice one down, finally off the mark. Right, try and get it up a bit higher. Lovely jubbly. So let's get it put back. Right up. Straight away. <laughs> Straight away there. Gone. Lovely. Well, good morning, guys. So, it's 20 past seven. So, you know what time it is? It's coffee time. <laughs> okay, so. I've got another coffee for you today guys and it's from the same company Deluxe and the first coffee I showed you I said it was from Colombia and it was and then the next time I thought I said I must have read it wrong it's not Colombian, Colombian it's got a Malian so right it was Colombian coffee guys so um, what it is is the, the, the company's called Deluxe but they, make it, they supply coffee from around the world Today we've got a new coffee, which is Kenyan. And this is a fruity fresh lemon and blackcurrant nuts. So, um, it's a nice coffee, but it's not as nice as the other ones, to be honest with you. Um, it has got like a, a acidic taste if you get what I mean of which is obvious from the lemon but apart from that it is a it's an alright coffee so 
let's get one on. Like I say, as per usual guys, I've had this one at home uh, through the uh, Barista coffee machine. Um, but I've not had it through through this one yet. So I'll keep this one from the bank. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? A good coffee on the bank. It's only three strength again, so it's not really a morning coffee. Depending on how you like your coffee, really. But I mean, with these with these machines, you do get quite a uh, quite a strong coffee off from it because obviously there's a lot of coffee going in it. So, no fish for me last night at all. Um, I had three spots, which from watching the water yesterday morning, we saw where the fish was moving and whatnot. And I also sent the boat out with the uh, the deeper sonar on. Um, but the problem I had with that was the lake is is pretty much down in its water levels. Um, so in most areas it's roughly two and a half foot, two foot seven. So because it's not deep enough, it's not reading the bottom on raw. So what I've had to do <coughs> is put it into basic mode. And with it being in basic, all it does is shows you just like the undulations of the water, of the, 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 the lake bed and the depths, it doesn't, and fish are fish are there, but it doesn't show you um, if there's any weed or anything like that, or the prop, or if there's any drop, like little, no, like holes where they've been feeding, it doesn't show you any of that. So anyway, I managed to find some bars, a bar over that, that side and a bar off that side. So see here, you can see roots off the bottom of the tree, the water's two, the water level's two foot down. So there's a bar comes off that, um, which brings it to about one and a half foot off the surface. So I'll drop one pretty close, I'll drop one pretty close to there, just before the bar. Because um, there was fish, fishing, fizzing over there yesterday. So I put one there and not, I got nothing from it. And we come round to there, you see a duck swimming in there now. And then just the tree, as it's, it's come up to the tree now, just, hold on, where's my finger, just there. There's another bar just there, and that bar apparently comes right the way along. And then it drops off, and then it picks up again over this left hand side. So, I've done the same again there, there was fish. There was fish showing themselves over there. So I dropped the rig off there as well and I got nothing from it. From any of them spots, to tell you the truth, all day yesterday. And I decided to move them. So I'm gonna bring you around left a bit. Um, now, uh, it's hard to see. Can't really see, let me have a look. So, oh, you're right, okay. You can see two dead trees in the water. So there's been fish swimming and shooting all the way, all the day yesterday where them dead trees are. And they've come right into a bit, into that bay, right? They were showing in there as well. So what I've done is my middle rod, I've put that in that, I've put that towards tree bar, but in the middle of that, of them, dead trees and online with the tree off the bar where I had originally I brought it over and put it sort of smack centre in the bay. So that's where my middle rod is now. But yeah you can see there's fizzing over there as well. Even now there's still fizzing over that way on. Right, so I'm gonna bring you left on the on the corner there. Come left you'll see another little green tree. So you got the pin that tree there where the, you can see the come left you can see a tree just sticking out in the corner, dark tree. And then you come back this way and you can see another tree. That's where my left hand rod is. Now fish have been crashing in there last night and a lot of fizzing going on. I had three bream off there. 
I haven't filmed them because uh, we're not here for the bream. Um, but I have had three bream off there and the biggest was probably about four pound. But I'm hoping that a, a carp's gonna uh, pick it up as well from there. So that's that one. So let's bring you back around this way. I'm gonna have to move the camera over this side now. And it's got the usual bits I want to normally use, guys. So, um, right. That tree there, my right hand rod is off that tree about six foot this way. Now, yes, oh shit, my coffee's gone over. Shit. Shite. Shite. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> Fucking coffee's gone over. Right, so when we got here yesterday morning, guys, it's seven o'clock. It was fizzing all over here. And uh, the silt was being disturbed. It was coloured up and everything. And, but obviously they'd moved out. This morning I'm getting up. And, oh, actually, last night, see, this tree here, a big fish jumped out of the water there last night. Um, and maybe it's in hindsight, should have put a uh, pulled my rod in and put it on it, but I didn't. I would not been so far off it. I was hoping it was going to come round to where I'm fit, to where my, my rig is, and probably pick it off. But anyway, that, that didn't happen. So, um, Yeah, there's been quite a lot of fizzing in here this morning as well, but now they've seemed to have moved out. So, but I haven't redone the rigs. I've left them as they are, hoping that, I don't know, I might get one. So, I did, with the fizzing that going, I probably scared some of them off actually, because I've chucked, a, I've chucked some boilies in, probably about 10 boilies over this side here. Uh, and then I fired in a couple of catapults of pellets, four, four and a half mil pellets as well. So, but they're around here, there's, there's a load of fizzing going on. So maybe they might come back, I don't know. So, let's try again. Now for milk. Fish are moving back in. There's a lot more fizz in there again now. So when I put the pellets and the boilers in, I think I spooked them out a bit. But it looks like they're coming back down. They're all over, fizzing loads of fizzing over there. Over this way. There's fizzing and discoloring around here. But I'm over this side. I'm, they're about a rod length away from my from my bit, a rod and a half length. Tell you what though guys, it's a lovely lake this. That that's an island that there on that side. So all this side here, my boundaries by the by the map in the in the hut there, my boundaries goes right to the end. You know the island where I showed you my spots, right to the end of the green, the last green bush. That 
and down to the, the peninsula here. This is all my water, but because of them dead trees and the water on that side, it's a bit dangerous to, to go right out to the end. So, I mean, if I, if, if I, got, if I did were to get a fish and it ran left, it's going to get wrapped up around them, around them dead trees, and I don't want that to happen. I can't remember said if it was ten or fourteen acres. When I was talking to the guy in the shop yesterday, um, and there's uh, about three hundred carp in here, and I think it got about thirty-five pound. But yeah, hopefully, get this, uh, get these, this session out of the way, because the bailiff's on the next peg up. Um, because like right, we're on a guest session with the bailiff to prove ourselves. So fingers crossed, they give us the night permit, and then we can get back down here as much as we like then, and do, do some like, some fishing, and hopefully, get amongst these fish. We're going to walk around later on and get a look at the, the whole lake. What we did yesterday, we just came straight to our pegs. Uh, so, I'll take you into Darren's peg short, you know I'll have to have my coffee. And I'll show you Darren's peg, which is peg 10. That's a lovely peg as well. I wanted to put the drone up. I asked the, the, the bailiff if it was right to put the drone up. Um, but there's a flight path or something here, and there's a flight school just over the, over that way. So we're not allowed, um, or it's a training flight place, I don't know what, what you said it was. But they have got, on the website and on the Facebook page and that, they have got a video where somebody, they've had a professional guy in with a drone to do some drone footage on here for him. So I'm going to see if I can pull that down and put it into my video for, and so you can, like, you can get a good look at the lake like guys. Um, but yeah, it's a nice lake. It's just a pity the water level's down. I think you said it was spring fed. Um, and it's a gravel, it's a gravel pit, a spring fed gravel pit, but it's got a lot of silt. So, when the water, I don't know how it works, how this works, but when the water drop, water level drops, the silt level drops. And then when it, the water level comes back up, so does the silt level, he said. That's my guess. So, yeah, it's a bit strange how that works. put you back on the lake. It's a lovely morning as well. I don't know if you can see it just over here. There's loads of fizzing going on here. But they seem to be moving left now. They come closer in and then they go back left. But there's loads of fizzing going on. Fish showing. Over to my left they're showing as well. Tell you what size is peg, you could easy fish six rods. I don't know whether to redo my rods now or wait. Wait till they move out, then do them. Because obviously they, they came back in again last night, tea time-ish, from about half past five onwards, they came back in. And then they must have moved out again. But uh, I don't really want to be spooking them. Read the, but it could it could entice a bite or not, couldn't it? Let me put you over that way as well. So over there, back of where the tree is, where that over here, the the bar, and that was, I'm I'm sort of centralised. 
There's fishing going on there as well. And that's where my rig is over there as well, where there's a lot of fishing coming up. They're all over. Like I said, guys, I don't know if, it's, if, if that's showing up on the camera. It should be. Well, well done, Darren. You're kicking me ass. I caught ways. <laughs> no, it's not like always, but yeah, you're kicking me ass. I'm, I'm blanking. It's your second one now. What's it coming at? 16. 16 10. 16 10. Uh -huh. So yeah, well done, mate. Nice linear. If it wasn't for its mouth being bust up, that'd yeah. be a nice fish. That. Uh -huh. Brings head back towards you a bit. Okay, mate. Sides his head. Straighten it up. Brilliant. Well done, Darren, mate. Well, guys, what a beautiful morning. It's our final day. Like the swans diving on my spot there. May as well get a swan because I've never had a fish of it. <laughs> so, anyway, guys, good morning. And what a beautiful morning it is today. It's our final day. And I lost a fish last night. Absolutely gutted I was. There's one just jumped on the spot. So yeah, Darren's had two out. About two o'clock in the night, I had a run. Got out the, I got out the bivvy, lifted into it. And it was, it was raining. And uh, I'm sure that the carp had got to them trees. I felt it, I was playing it, and then I felt something like jagged, if you get what I mean. Um, or something, something resistance there besides, besides the carp. I got a hook pull, so I lost that. And with it being pissing down, I couldn't be bothered to uh, get the bait boat out because I'd put it in the van for the night. And uh, I couldn't be bothered to get it out in the pissing down rain. So I just casted it out and hoped for the best. I couldn't see where it went. I just casted it in the region of where I got that fish. So that was it for the night, and then 
it was tell like it wasn't. Then I got a a pickup on the left hand rod. Like the alarm went, stopped, woke us up. Then a few minutes later it went again, stopped, what so I got up um, for another brain. So I didn't bother putting that rod back out. I left that out last night. So there was just the two rods in fishing through the night. That's it. Till now, I've had nothing. Well, while I was up sorting my rod out after I had that take, the bailiff was on the peg down from down from me. He had a run. So he landed, I think it was a bailiff, it was either bailiff or his mate anyways. Anyway, they, one of them had a fish out last night. I don't know what it was, how big it was, anything like that. Um, there's a guy on six, I don't think he had anything. I never heard any of anybody else's alarms. And there's some guys on five, three, and one. Whether they've had any fish out, I don't know. But yeah, like I said, Darren's had two, so he's, uh, he's uh, saved the video again, hasn't he, from, uh, from not having no fish on it. So anyway, we, we reeled in yesterday, about two o'clock we reeled in. And we went down onto the peg where the bailiff was, I had a bit crack with him and that. And uh, he was telling us about the place. And anyway, this was like a, a working zoo. Um, and it's still got animals on it. There's, uh, I don't know what they were, just one walk around that way between peg five and six, I think it is. There's a, uh, there's an enclosure with these types of bears on in it. Can't remember what they were. But anyway, I took a little video and a photograph, so I'll put, I'll put it up now for you to have a look at. But uh, what a place this is, mine. I'm hoping that we get our night ticket for it. Um, So what we have to do, we've had a bit crack with him. It seems likely, because he said, well, if you come back, um, you'll have to try this, this, and this. So I think he's going to put the word in with the, with the owner to give us a night ticket. Um, he's a nice guy, he's a nice guy, the bailiff, actually. Very helpful. I can't remember his name, though. Shit with names, man, man. That's why I call everybody mate. <laughs> right, let's pour this coffee out. I remember once I was working on a job for this bloke, uh, doing some plastering for him. And I called him mate. He turns around and says, I'm not your mate. And, oh, very sorry mate. <laughs> like, I'm shit with names, you know what I mean? Everybody's mate to me. I thought, what a fucking prick. I'm not your mate. <laughs> well, there's not many fish on this morning. We've got till 7 p.m. if we want to stay that long. But um, I don't know, it depends. I've got like two and a quarter hour drive to my house but then it's like another 20 minutes half hour to Darren's house so uh, that's nearly what three two and three quarter hour drive by the time I dropped Darren off and got back to mine emptied me van out gonna be well leave the van till in the morning I suppose but mm, don't know we'll see it seems, it seems like this, this particular peg anyway. Normally, round about this time in the morning, from what I've worked out in the two days I've been here, 
that you see a lot of fizzing around this end, or around this bottom end, a bit over the top and in the middle. Um, and then by about 12 o'clock-ish, then you don't see nothing. And then what we noticed was on the first night from about uh, six onwards, then the fish started coming in. One big one jumped out and crashed just in that bin right next to the tree just over there. So I primed that yesterday, dropped some bait on it without a rig on it. And I put it and I put a rig on it last night to try and pick a one off there last night, but I've had not not even a bleep off that. I've not seen nothing in there. We'll see. It's always a different day and fish don't, I don't suppose they always keep to the same plan or do they? I suppose they have the, the feeding spots don't they where they move throughout the course of the day. But there's still some fishing over there, I don't think, I don't know if it's carp, it may not be, maybe just be big bream. Because we are being played with the bream and it's about four or five bream now. And then <laughs> he told us, which was a bit too late after we caught some bream, if you catch a bream, chuck it in the in the um, pond behind us, in the, the match pond. <clears throat> but even on that match pond, they go to 20s, he said, in there. And when they get too big to be in there, they take them out and put them in here. But I was looking on the... Um, Facebook page last night because there's a map there somewhere that's of this lake and it shows you where all the bars are in your swims but I can't find it <coughs> so I have to try and find that the next time I come if we get our ticket so uh, what we're going to do we're going to on about dinner time I think we're going to reel in or pack down whatever once we pack down go down to the shop and see, I think it's Richard, you call him, the owner. He runs the shop. Um, Richard Barrett, I think his name is. So, we're gonna go down and see him and have a bit crack with him and uh, see what the chances are of getting that ticket. Because we definitely wanna come back here. You don't pay for it, it's a free ticket. But you have to renew it every year the fish over the back, right at the back. See on my, on the map in there, shows your boundaries. My boundary goes from the peninsula tree there, along a diagonally, which is a bit weird, you think it would come straight across, wouldn't you? But it comes along diagonally to the point of that first dead tree, along the dead tree, and then straight back into the second tree, this way. I actually thought it was the right there, the very end of it, but it's not. It's the second tree down. And the fish are mainly between them dead trees and up there, but they do come down this way, but not so far around that, the bay. And I'd really like to get me rig further in, but I don't want to with the bailiff being there, just in case he, he thinks I'm fishing too dangerously. But I imagine that's my boundary, so I could go there if I wanted to, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna ruin my chances of getting this ticket. I mean, we don't wanna put the fish in danger anyway, do we? But if I was closer up there, I'd, I'd have to be locked up on the, on the rig that was up there. Um, all right for during the daytime, but at night time is a bit dangerous. Getting out of that bivy quick enough. <coughs> right, drink some coffee. Mm. 
supposed to rain today, no? From the weather forecast when I looked out last night. Looking at the sky, you wouldn't think it was going now. It's absolutely lovely. Let's get me phone and we'll check the weather. Oop. Oh, where have I put my phone? There it is. Proper come down last night. The heavens proper open. But if you're starting to dry up now anyway. Once it's dried, I'll start and have a slow pack down. I didn't have to get back for the dogs, and now alas, I'll see about seeing if we could stay another night. But I don't know if this peg's booked. Let's have a look. Mm, it is, it's got rain. 0 0.3 millimeter shower, or rain. 100%, 15 mile hour winds, 15 celsius, 9 o'clock, it's got to rain, 10 o'clock, same showers, 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 showers all the way through, looking now, until I think 7 o'clock, time is it now, quarter past 8, Give away. What's that, I'm gonna have to open, get this freaking bivy dried, aren't I? Mm, doo -doo -doo -doo. Bloody hell. Have me coffee and I'll start and pack down, I think. And it rains, it wants to rain, it can rain then. Just leave the gear out there and eat. Right guys, it's now 12 o'clock and it's our final day and it's looking like it's looking like it's going to be a blank on the cards for me anyhow well I'm saying a blank if you want to count the brain then no I haven't blanked but uh, yeah no carp anyhow since losing that one last night so we're going to probably give it another hour two hours um, hopefully in that time uh, We'll get a carp on the bank. So guys, I'm gonna end the video here. If I get a fish, before I go, obviously it'll be in, on video. If not guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to enjoy fishing, and I'll catch you on the next one.